Then looking up to heaven, Jesus sighed and said, Ephatha, that is, be opened. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our gospel today comes from the seventh chapter of Mark. As of last week, we were back in Mark for a while after several weeks talking about bread in the Gospel of John. One thing you always have to remember about Mark is that it was designed to be spoken aloud all in one piece. The story moves quickly. There's inertia at work here, and one bit always leads into the next. So anytime we look at a passage in Mark, we really have to look back. So in chapter 6, Jesus fed 5,000 men plus women and children. He walked on water. He healed the sick. And it was a seriously action-packed, big excitement chapter. Chapter 7 shifts to talking and teaching. Jesus uses his words, not big actions, to get his point across. But you have to remember that this talking and teaching is coming right on the heels of those big miracles that just happened. Now, we read from the first half of chapter 7 last week. The message Jesus was trying to get across was to worry more about what comes out of you than what goes in. Last week, I preached a sermon about making sure what comes out of you is kind and generous, respectful and considerate, that what comes out of you is loving. It strengthens your relationship with others and your relationship with God. So it should be particularly striking and disconcerting to hear in the very next section of chapter 7, Jesus say something that was not kind or generous or respectful or considerate. Jesus calls a woman and her sick daughter dogs. This is meant to jolt us a little and make us pay really close attention. It's fascinating when you think of it for Jesus, who has just recently taken five loaves and two fish and fed thousands of people to make a statement about scarcity. The reason it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs is that then there isn't enough for the children. You can't give the dogs the children's food, but you only have to prioritize the children if resources are scarce. If the children and the dogs can't both get good food, The Syrophoenician woman sees this and names it. Really? Jesus, you're worried about scarcity? Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. There's a reminder here that there is, in fact, enough for everyone. And Jesus, whose vision was to care for and teach the people of Israel so that they could care for and teach others, Jesus sees his vision expand, and he's grateful. He tells the woman that her daughter has been healed. And then he moves on, but he doesn't go directly back home to Capernaum or another village on the Sea of Galilee. Instead, he goes to Sidon, which is the other direction. The recognition that what Jesus has to offer can be given to even more people causes him to go further afield. And in the Decapolis, Jesus heals a deaf man. Ephatha, be opened. I have to wonder, is Jesus just speaking to the man? Or is he speaking to himself? Be opened. Opened to new possibilities, to new ideas, a new level of inclusion. It matters that Mark puts these two healing stories back to back. In the first, Jesus heals a young girl who's not even present. He doesn't use any words to dismiss the demon. He definitely doesn't lay a hand on the child. He simply reports that the healing has happened. For the deaf man, there's a whole process. He's taken away in private. Jesus puts his fingers in the man's ears. He spits, he touches the man's tongue. He speaks words of healing. So these two healings couldn't be more different. Why? Why are they so different? I think one answer is in Jesus' words, be opened. 
what worked for one person isn't necessarily what's best for someone else. The process I used before can't always be applied to a new situation. These two healings are very different, but they are both clearly good. Be opened. What might God be calling you, calling us, to be open to? What possibilities have you not even considered? Is there a ministry opportunity we don't know about yet? Is there a person or group of people we haven't been including? I hope you noticed in the September newsletter that went out this week that our church is going to host our first ever St. Michael's Day Blessing on September 29th. Michael is our patron and is also the patron saint of first responders and warriors. As a way to celebrate and say thank you, we're inviting those folks to come drive by our church for a blessing in their service vehicles. As we began planning this event, we talked about inviting the Blanco Police and Fire Department. But we quickly realized that vision was too narrow. We needed to open it up. For the last couple of weeks, members of St. Michael's have been reaching out to all the services we could think of so we can recognize and bless as many people as possible. The Blanco Police, the Johnson City Police, Blanco County Emergency Department, Sheriff, Highway Patrol, State Park Police, Game Warden, the American Legion, the VFW. We don't want to leave anyone out. Incidentally, if there's a group you didn't hear me name and you think they should be included as a first responder or a warrior, please let me know. On St. Michael's Day, we want to particularly honor certain people for their service. We want to offer them a blessing. But this event will be open to everyone. A person doesn't have to be a first responder or a veteran or even a member of our church to participate. If you aren't a first responder or veteran, I hope you'll join us on the church lawn to help recognize and thank those who are. Bring a friend, hold a sign, wave a hand, and say thank you. I'm grateful to the outreach committee and bishops committee who were open to trying this new thing. I don't know how it's gonna work. Likely, we'll learn some things and do a few things differently the next time. It might go perfectly, and we'll still defy, decide to try a few things differently next time. It's so important to be open. I'm convinced that open is what gives the Holy Spirit room to work. St. Michael's Day is still a few weeks away. Can you tell I'm excited about it? And St. Michael's Day isn't the only thing happening in September. In another couple of weeks, you're going to start hearing more about stewardship. Dennis Tottenham is this year's stewardship chair, and he and I are already making plans. All I'm going to say for now is that I hope you will be open to being more generous than you thought possible. Generosity can be scary. We want to have enough for the children, and we don't want to throw our money to the dogs. But no one is going to ask you to prioritize dogs over children. Just remember that there is enough for both. A God that can feed thousands of people with two fish and five loaves can feed children and dogs alike. And even Jesus needed to be reminded of that. When he left Tyre, having healed the Syrophoenician woman's daughter and traveled to Sidon and then the Decapolis where he opened the ears of a man who had been deaf, Mark tells us the people were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. What exactly is it that Jesus had done well? He listened. He was persuaded. He responded to the needs at hand, even though those needs may have seemed greater than his original plan made time or space for. He allowed himself to be opened. We worship a God who listens, who hears our prayers, responds to our needs, and who, as the world changes and time goes on, continues to find new ways to love us. Thanks be to God.